because I I think a lot of students have got this on their mind. If I've accepted my offer, can I defer for one year? Yeah, that's that's definitely a question that we're hearing a lot as well at our end. Um, and, and interestingly, so at the time we're recording this, this is the day after the deadline for decisions. And at points we were busier than we would be on A-level results day, um, which I think just gives you a really good indication of just how much people are, are kind of really actively thinking and, and um, you know, really considering their options and what, what might be available to them. So can you defer for a year? Well, you can certainly request to defer for a year. Um, it is it is worth stressing that if you are holding an offer for 2020 offer, then that that is your offer and you're not entitled to any kind of deferral. You, you don't have the right to put your um, entry back for a year, but you absolutely can ask for that. And in lots of cases, universities and colleges will agree to that. Um, there may be reasons in certain cases why they, they can't do that. So if, if places are extremely limited, then in the interests of fairness for the next cycle, they may not be able to put people forward for a year. Um, it may be that there are particular qualifications or gaps in learning that they need to factor in. Um, but, but there is absolutely nothing to stop you from asking for that deferral. A couple of things that that's worth just thinking through, though, if, if that's something that you're considering, um, just in the same way that you're not entitled to defer. If you do end up deferring, you're not entitled to bring your your entry back to 2020 if you change your mind a little bit further down the road. So that would be a fresh request. And, and it is possible that if places go over the summer and then you get to September and change your mind, that there may not be space. Um, so really think carefully before you do that. I would also suggest thinking really carefully about um, what it is you want to do for that year. Typically, applicants who take deferred entry would spend that year traveling, gaining work experience or paid work opportunities um, and, and think really carefully about what might be open to you this year. We know that um, traveling is likely to be limited. We know that the job market is going to be quite difficult. So, so do think about what you'll do with that time if you choose to defer um, and also think about what the benefits of that would really be to you. So um, there are a few things that we're hearing a lot of at the moment partly um, people are worried about missing the social side of university and that experience when they start um, and I, I would say do bear in mind there's no guarantees that that we'll see significant change next year so if you start in 2021 nobody can say with absolute certainty that things will be back to normal or you know whatever normal was um, and the reasons that you wanted to go to university there's probably a good chance that when you were kind of filling in your application in the first place, you weren't thinking, I want to do this so that I can socialise in my first term. So, so remember what those drivers were, the reasons that you wanted to go to university in the first place, because many of them actually you will still get um, if you start in 2020. So, so just think really carefully about what your experience would be in 2020, what your experience might be if you, if you do choose to push that back to 2021, and, and think really carefully and critically about what the best route for you is going to be. I think as well when I've thought about it is hopefully things do start going back to maybe a bit of an old normal. Um, but are you going to risk the chance of going back a year when it could, this sort of situation at the moment could just affect the first two, three months of a three year process that you could be at university. Uh, and if that's the case, then there's going to be a lot of applicants next year. Um, if a lot of people have not took up their opportunity to go this year, so I think it's a hard, very hard decision for anybody at the moment. Um, but I think these are the things that you need to take into context when you're choosing. Yeah, I think I think that's absolutely right, Josh. And um, again, some of the it's really difficult, I think, in, in, in the position that you guys are in, in that you don't have a, a kind of experience of, of university yet to compare it to. Um, so, for example, I've, I've, I've seen people commenting that um, they, they really want that lecture experience and, and lectures are, are the things that um, universities are expecting will be done um, online instead. They, they will retain, many of them are planning to retain face-to-face -face seminars and small group teaching, um, but it's the large lectures that that they will probably shift to, to a different way of delivery. Um, and it's interesting that a lot of current students are actually saying I prefer to do the lectures remotely because it's lectures very big They're, they tend to be quite anonymous if you're in one of those sorts of scenarios with 200 people sat in a lecture theatre um, 
if it's really early in the morning, the lecture theatre might be a little bit cold, it's not necessarily comfortable, and they're really enjoying the opportunity to do those kinds of, um, have that kind of teaching from the comfort of their own, uh, I was going to say their own living room, sometimes from the comfort of their own bedroom, you know, however however they choose to set their, their learning station up. Um, so the, people are finding that there's actually some benefits at the moment to those alternative styles of learning. So it, it really is thinking, it's important to think really carefully about what what you expect to be different and what you know what it is that you really want from your experience.